everyone, welcome to Wilkes Now. I'm Brianna Ebish. And I'm Hannah Simerson. Let's take a look at what we have on today's show. Hello, it's AJ Arita. Stay tuned to hear about this week's weather update. Hi, I'm Bailey Gatiss. And I'm Chris Gowardy. Today, we will be giving you an update on the Wilkes Spring Athletic Contest. Stay tuned to hear all about your Colonel Athletics. So, Spring Fling is happening on campus this Friday, and I will definitely be in attendance. What about you, Bray? Yeah, me too. I'm really excited. It's our first one since freshman year, so mm -hmm. I think the excitement level is higher because of that, for sure. Definitely. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> Wilkes University Theater presents Chicago, a dazzling and heart-stirring musical with music by John Cater, lyrics by Fred Ebb, and book by Ebb and Bob Fosse. Performances will be held at 8 p.m. on April 7th, 8th, and 9th, and at 2 p.m. on April 9th and 10th at the Dorothy Dixon Dart Center for the Performing Arts. This will mark the final Wilkes production of director Joseph G. C. Dawson, Associate Dean of the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, and Associate Professor of Theater, before his retirement at the end of the academic year. Dawson joined Wilkes in 1994 and has directed over 50 main stage shows. Tickets are free for Wilkes students, faculty, and staff, $15 for general admission and $10 for students and senior citizens. The It's On Us book club announced its book pick for the month of April. The book club will be reading Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll this month. Soon to be a major motion picture, Luckiest Girl Alive centers on a magazine editor who seems to have it all. In reality, she continues to deal with the emotional fallout from a series of horrifying events during her teenage years, slowly revealed as the movie progresses. As part of the It's On Us grant program, Wilkes University's new book club highlights books with themes of sexual assault and relationship violence. The club will host a discussion of the book on April 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Miller Room on the second floor of the Henry Student Center. Pizza will be served at the discussion. The book club is open to all students, faculty, and staff. For more information, contact Elizabeth Leo at elizabeth.leo at wilkes.edu or 570-408-7788. Now let's throw it to Ariel for Beacon Briefs. This is Ariel Reed, your managing editor of The Beacon. Now let's dive into Beacon Briefs. Joseph C. Dawson, Associate Dean of the College of the Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences and Associate Professor of Theater, will present his final production of Chicago before his retirement at the end of the academic year. Dawson has been working with the university since 1994 with the pleasure of directing 50 main stage shows and working with generations of students. Performances will be held at 8 p.m. on April 7th, 8th, and 9th, and at 2 p.m. on April 9th and 10th at the Dorothy Dickinson Dart Center. Tickets and performances are $15 general admission, $10 for students and senior citizens, and free to all Wilkes students and faculty. Parking is available, including handicap accessible options behind the Henry Student Center. Tickets can be purchased by calling the box office at 570-408-4540. Thank you for all your wonderful performances and enjoy your retirement, Mr. Dawson. On April 1st, Dr. Akri Shimitsu and colleagues joined to celebrate the publication of his book, Specialty Food, Market Culture, and Daily Life in Early Modern Japan, Regulating and Deregulating the Market in Edo, 1780-8070. The book is a result of Shimizu's rigorous scholarship in the study of specialty food in Japanese society. His interest in this topic of the food branding began when he was in Memphis, Tennessee, working at a Japanese restaurant in the late 1990s. Here, he was posed with the question, does one need a Japanese chef to prepare Japanese food? To purchase Shimizu's book, a link on the website can be found at Wilkes Today email from March 28th. As part of the Alan Hamilton Dickinson Spring Writer Series in the English Department, visiting writer Jason Schneiderman was welcomed to campus this past week. An associate professor of English at the Borough of Manhattan Community College and an instructor in the MFA program at Warren Wilson College, he is the author of four collections of poetry, two of which, Hold Me Tight and Primary Source, were given to the students through the Dickinson Fund. The Spring Writer Series will host one more writer this year, Margaret Atwood, on April 26th at 7 p.m. in the FM Kirby Center for the Performing Arts. Now, over to LA&E. The Women's and Gender Studies Conference was held at Wilkes on Monday, April 4th and Tuesday, April 5th. The theme of the keynote address was Fit for no Polite Company, Religion, Race, and Gender, and examined how race and gender shaped religion. The Sordorni Art Gallery opened up its new exhibit today, running until May 29th, featuring the work of artist Dan R. Talley, State, Obvious, Not So. It's decades worth of multimedia art ranging from photography, video, sculpture, mixed media, and paintings. For more information on this exhibit, visit the gallery's Instagram account at Sojourner Gallery. 
let's hop over to opinion. Have you ever thought about the differences between seeing a movie in a theater or watching one from your home? Our writer Hannah details the psychological and emotional factors affecting each one. Be sure to check out page 18 to see what her thoughts are. Now, over to sports. It was quite the week for the baseball team. A doubleheader on Saturday afternoon led to 4-3 and 7-6 wins for the Wilkes as they hosted FDU Florida after a 6-5 loss on Friday. The Colonels returned to the pitch with a trip to Des Sales University on Friday at 3.30 p.m. Good luck, Colonels. The men's lacrosse team faced off against FDU Florham on Saturday afternoon at Schmidt Stadium. The Colonels fell to the visiting Devils 11-9 in a close Mac Freedom contest, the loss bringing Wilkes' record to 0-2 in the conference and 4-7 overall. However, Wilkes will look to redeem themselves and have the opportunity to earn their first conference win of the year as they travel to take on Arcadia University Knights tonight at 7 p.m. Go get them! We will be taking a break from printing next week to observe the Easter holiday. Be sure to stick around for the last issue of the year, which will be published on April 27th. That's all we have for Beacon Briefs. Don't forget to grab your copy around campus today and in the surrounding areas. Or you can go to www.thewilkesbeacon.com for more information. Now, let's throw it back to the news desk. Thanks, Ariel. Wilkes now will be right back after this public service announcement. Meet Norm. He lives with anxiety, but with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal, just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker, new from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. A My Social Security account allows you to access your earnings history and benefits information, request a replacement Social Security card, get a proof of income letter, estimate and apply for benefits, and more. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash myaccount. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Join the Nursing Student Organization and Civic Engagement from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday, April 9th on the Greenway for the Race for Ukraine 5K. You'll be making a difference in the lives of innocent Ukrainian civilians who are caught up in the conflict. Additionally, up to and on the day of the event, they will be collecting medical supplies for Ukrainian citizens. Items needed include first aid supplies, feminine hygiene products, personal hygiene products, and blankets. You are invited to be a part of our Colonel community and make or join a team as a department, club, or organization. Refreshments will be provided. The registration free fee is $30 and 100% of the proceeds of this event will go to the Airbnb.org Emergency Shelter Fund, which provides funds for citizens who have been displaced and allows them to secure free short-term housing. Second COVID booster shots will be available on campus in the McHale Athletic Center today until 1 p.m. and April 11th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Clinics will be administered by the Wilkes-Bear Health Department. To qualify, at least four months must have passed between the date of your last dose. If you are under 18, you must have a compromised immune system to qualify for the second booster. Please bring your vaccination card and a completed copy of the consent form, which can be found on the Wilkes Today email from April 4th. Appointments for the booster shot are required. We'll be right back after this quick PSA. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. My name is Blake. I received a heart transplant when I was two weeks old. I play defense for the Red Hot Tornadoes. Sometimes my heart starts pounding like faster and faster as I go. I know I have someone else's heart inside me. It makes me feel happy because someone was generous enough to give me a second chance to live. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov.
let's send it to Zara where she gives us her opinion on the madness surrounding NFL free agency. Thanks, Bree. The National Football League offseason kicked off on February 22nd while free agency started on March 14th. To put it simply, no offseason in NFL history has even been as predictable and crazy as this year's, especially for the Green Bay Packers. To start it off, Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers signed a massive contract extension on March 8th. I'm not a fan of the contract that Rodgers was given. Rodgers' contract guarantees him over $150 million over the next three years. Who's to say Rodgers will not just play one year, take the guaranteed money, and then retire? If that would be the case, then the Packers would be left with over $70 million in dead cap, and Roger, so Rodgers can legitimately screw over the Packers organization with his contract. Now, the power is sadly in his hands. About one hour later, nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback Russell Wilson sent shockwaves throughout the league when he got traded to the Denver Broncos for five picks. A tight end Noah Fant, quarterback Drew Locke, and defensive end Shelby Harris. The Seahawks also sent back a fourth round pick. Packers, Vikings, and Lions fans can rejoice. On March 10, the Chicago Bears traded former Defensive Player of the Year edge rusher Khalil Mack to the Los Angeles Chargers for a second round pick and a 2023 sixth round pick. March 17th was a tough day to be a Packers fan. Pro Bowl wide receiver Allen Robinson signed with the Super Bowl champions Los Angeles Rams. But the worst news was yet to come, as star Packers two-time All-Pro wide receiver Devontae Adams was traded to the Las Vegas Raiders for the 22nd overall pick in the Raiders' second round pick. The Packers should have received more, as Adams' value is worth so much more than that. The NFL world was set into orbit on March 23, when star wide receiver Tyree Kill was traded to the Miami Dolphins for five picks. Hill wanted to be the highest paid wide receiver, and he did just that. To see an electrifying wide receiver get traded out of nowhere shocked everyone. On March 31st, former Seahawks six-time All-Pro linebacker Bobby Wagner joined the rival Rams. Where are the Rams finding the money for all these moves? The Rams want to be back-to-back -back world champions, and it shows. It has only been four weeks since moves started happening and is already the craziest offseason of all time. That's all I have for today. Let's send it to Bailey and Chris for a Wilkes update. Thanks, Zara. Welcome to Sports Now. I'm Bailey Gatiss. And I'm Chris Gowardy. The baseball team is coming off of a two-game win streak as they beat FDU Forum in a home doubleheader this past weekend. The Colonels beat the Devils 4-3 in the first game and 7-6 in the second game. In game one, both sides of the field remained scoreless until the fourth inning. FDU got the bats going in the top of the frame, scoring three runs off of six hits. Wilkes answered in the bottom of the fourth with RBIs from junior A.J. Brocious, who had a sacrifice fly to center, and senior Michael Patrizio, who had a sacrifice fly to right field. In the sixth inning, Patrizio got his second RBI of the day by doubling the left center, bringing in first-year Mike Shaw to tie the game. Wilkes held FDU scoreless in the seventh and added another run as first-year Zach Luxick singled the left field, scoring graduate student Brandon Reno the winning run. Luxick told Bailey that it was thrilling to hitting the winning run. Reno had a great hit and did his job getting on base in that situation. The same goes for Stone Warmouth, working an at-bat to get the walk to first. So to have those runners in scoring position really helped him with hitting the ball to the outfield to bring them in. Senior Tony, Tony Molitoris pitched six innings, only allowing six hits, three runs, four walks, and added four strikeouts. Molitoris told me that winning the first game was definitely important. We have been in a slump the last couple of weeks, so it was really good to get the first one today and be able to have a chance to win the game series. Game two started out hot as FDU got the bats firing in the top of the first inning, scoring two runs. Wilkes responded with an RBI double from Reno, scoring graduate student Nick Pronti. The Devils came back in the second inning with a solo home run, making the score 3-1 to one at the top of the second. No scores in the third and fourth innings for FDU led to a chance for Wilkes to score, as junior Peyton Shook brought in Luxick and Reno on a single to left center in the bottom of the fourth, tying the score. Right after that, first-year Chase Rabel singled to center, scoring first-year Jimmy Brzozowski to get a 4-3 lead. The Colonels held FDU scoreless in the fifth inning and added three runs of their own to the board. Junior Max Alessi doubled the left field, bringing in Reno. Shuck singled up the middle, scoring both Luxick and Alessi. The score was 7-3 in the Colonels' favor going into the top of the seventh inning. The Devils tried to make a comeback, scoring three runs on a three-run home run, but Wilkes got the final out on a strikeout, ending the game and getting their second conference win of the day and on the season. Senior Gage Kudry got the win on the mound as he pitched four innings, allowing three runs on five hits with two walks and one strikeout. Baseball will play today as they host Wilson College for a doubleheader starting at 1 p.m. Softball is coming off of a split with FDU as they lost the first game 5-4 and won the second game 4-1. to 
In the second game, junior Hope Mullins got the win in the circle, only allowing three hits, three walks, and one run, while adding four strikeouts. Freshman Nicole Howe went three for four at the plate with two RBIs, and sophomore Hayden Callaman went two for three with two RBIs. The two brought in all four Colonel runs to secure the win. Mullins told me that this win was truly a team win. My defense had my back and allowed me to work the batters in the box. We had great plays all around, and then our hitting got us the win. Tonight, Wilkes will host Arcadia University in a doubleheader in hopes to pick up more MAC Freedom Conference wins. The men's tennis team lost two matches this weekend, putting the record at 4-4 four four on the season. The Colonels lost to your Sinus College 8-1 and to Lafayette College 6-1. Sophomore Cole Gibson was the lone winner for Wilkes as the number one single, defeating your Sinus sophomore Lars Jesperson in three sets by scores of 7-5, 5-7, and 10-5. Gibson told me that Lafayette was on a different level, but we were competing with them the whole time as a team. During the matches, we were still strongly supporting each other and working hard to improve against a team that was more challenging. The women's tennis team lost two matches to put their record at 3-4 and four in the season. The Colonels traveled to Lafayette where they lost 7-0 and then hosted New Paltz College at home where they lost 8-1. The Colonels' only win of the day came from the number one doubles duo of Zoe Klein and Cassidy Greenman as they won in three sets by a score of 8-4. Klein told Chris that we've all seen how far we've come as individuals. Just showing up to play our games can make all of the difference. Not everything will be a win, but the well fought for losses spark the greatest fuel for improvement. Tennis will play today at King's College starting at 3.30 p.m. Men's golf picked up a win over Misericordia University on Saturday, winning 328 to 337. Junior Andrew Fink led Wilkes with a score of 75. They will play tomorrow against Marywood University and King's College. Women's golf lost to the University of Scranton on Saturday, 425 to 368. Senior Sarah Sorber led Wilkes with a score of 92. They will play Sunday against Kings and Misericordia. The men's lacrosse team lost 11 to 9 against FDU on Saturday and will play tomorrow at Arcadia at, on Saturday. I mean, tomorrow at Arcadia and Saturday at DeSales University. Women's lacrosse is also coming off of a loss to FDU with a score of 21 to 4. They will host Arcadia and DeSales tomorrow and Saturday. Finally, the men's volleyball team finished their season on Saturday with two losses to Eastern University and Stevens. Stay tuned to Sports Now as we will be keeping you updated on all of the games and statistics every Tuesday. For more real-time information on all of the Wilkes athletic events, statistics, and final scores, go to www.gowilksu.com. You can read more about all of the Wilkes athletes and teams in this week's issue of The Beacon. Find a copy around campus or visit www.thewilkesbeacon.com. That is all we have this week for Sports Now. I'm Chris Gordy. And I'm Bailey Gatiss. Now here's an interview that SportsNow reporter Zara Lanceman did uh, with Nick Franci. Hello all, I'm Zara Lanceman. And today we will be featuring three baseball players that are working full time, playing their sport and getting their masters. And we're back. Um, I'm here now with Nick Pronti. He's also going to talk about being a nurse. So just tell me a little about yourself. Hey, Zar. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, a little bit about myself is I'm originally from New Jersey, but I've come back out here into uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania for, for work, for baseball, and for some uh, graduate schooling. And uh, I'm getting used to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I differ from New Jersey, but yes. happy to be here. Yep. Yeah. So what does your daily schedule consist of? So I'll just run you through, uh, I worked last night, rolled through to here for this interview, but uh, worked from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So that 12 hour shift, I roll into bedtime during the day, and then usually practice is around three o'clock, try and mix in a little weightlifting to, to stay in some good shape, and then mix some meals in and a little more sleep, and obviously some schoolwork, so. Wow. <laughs> Uh, what do you find yourself spending more time on? More time on, I'd say, is definitely in the hospital. Uh, we work, me and Brandon work 36 hours a week, so that's three 12-hour shifts. Um, so I'd say most of our time is spent in the hospital. But then, aside from that, I'd say the second most time we spend on is definitely on the field. Gotcha. Okay, so why did you choose Wilkes for graduate school? Um, just the opportunities that Wilkes has to offer. Uh, I know a lot of students that went through the MBA, pro MBA program as well, uh, and they had nothing but good things to say. And I know the opportunities that it'll bring to, to get this degree through Wilkes, so. 
So does playing baseball make it harder to be a registered nurse or like vice versa? Um, I'd say being a registered nurse, make, I'm going to go against what Brandon said and say being a registered nurse makes it harder to be a baseball player because we have to be so focused in the hospital and, uh, and spend a lot of our time there. So to, to bounce back from what we see and do there and then you know, put all of our focus on the field, that, that's pretty difficult. So I'd say harder to be a baseball player um, yeah. while being a nurse, yeah. yeah. So what was your driving force behind staying an additional year? Honestly, my, my coach's persuasion, Kevin Grabowski, he, uh, he was persuasive. We had a, a sour taste ending our last season. Uh, so I was really excited to, to come back and have an opportunity to play again when he had called me and, and said that that was an option. Um, so that, that was really the driving force, was the end of last season and, and my coach's persuasion. Okay, and then how do you balance everything? To be honest, I'm still working on that. Uh, it's been a few months since I, since I began working. Um, but just balancing, really just sleep, uh, making sure that I get that in. I know my body needs to rest, but um, that's probably the hardest balance as of right now, but still working on it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll be right back after this PSA. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. Ah! Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. My name is Blake. I received a heart transplant when I was two weeks old. I play defense for the Red Hot Tornadoes. Sometimes my heart starts pounding like faster and faster as I go. I know I have someone else's heart inside me. It makes me feel happy because someone was generous enough to give me a second chance to live. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Welcome back. Let's throw it to AJ for the weather. Hey, welcome back. I'm AJ Rubino. It is currently 39 degrees and party cl partly cloudy. The high today will be 60 and the low will be 47. The sunrise is at 638 and the sunset is at 32. Looking at this from a weekly perspective, it's not the same as it was last week. Tomorrow will be a chance of rain showers all throughout the day with a high of 59 and a low of 48. Tomorrow, Thursday, will be showers with a high of 56, a low of 48. Friday will be partly cloudy with a high of 60, a low of 40. Saturday will be partly sunny with a high of 55 and a low of 36. Sunday will be mostly sunny with a high of 52, a low of 35. And Monday will we go back to our regular routine with the sunshine with a high of 61 and a low of 48. So for the rain today, it's going to be more coming throughout South Region as it is aiming towards Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh will be most affected. By 8 o'clock tonight, it will still be more affecting the Pittsburgh area as it moves its way north. And by 1, 11 p.m. tonight, it should be all throughout Pennsylvania. Looking ahead, expect a lot of rain. That's the fine line here. It'll be a very damp week. That's all I have. Let's throw it back to the anchor desk. That's all the time we have for today. Just a reminder, you can watch us live every Tuesday on Service Electric Channel 97 at noon. Also, check out our YouTube channel for episodes of the show and more. In case you missed it, our broadcast re-airs every weeknight at 7.30 p.m. From all of us here at Wilkes Now, have a great week.